All right, let's check volume. <clears throat> and what was coming back at me needs to be <clears throat> turned down. How's everybody doing? So we just finished the very deep and involved Daniel chapter two, which takes you through mystery, Babylon, the great, the mother of all harlotry from A to Z. So that Daniel 2 syncs up perfectly with, how do we put it? Revelation 13, Revelation 17, Daniel 7, Daniel 9, Matthew 24, 1 through 37. And I was in a conversation with somebody yesterday that's very churchy. And they just lean into their fake pastors. And they don't know their pastors are fake. And we just will assume the pastors don't know they're fake. But the person was like, well, you know, this person's done a lot of studying. And I'm like, yeah, but the scribes and the Pharisees were the evil ones. And they knew the Bible better than anybody. Or their version of the Bible back then, which was the Old Testament. They were the experts, the leaders of religious law. And Jesus called them hypocrites, vipers. And you see these people today parading around in buildings, claiming they're teachers of Jesus and that they're the experts or that they are the chief studiers. Okay, they might try to act humble and go, well, you know, we're always learning more. But they would look you dead in the eye and say, well, surely I know more than that Trey Stokes character. He hasn't even been to seminary. And then clearly it states the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. They are foolishness under him, unto him. Neither can he know them because it's spiritually discerned. So I guess what they're saying is, is when they go into seminary and they start studying in a building, like in a university or a college, that by doing that, they have, they have then enacted and prompted the Holy Spirit to then come into them. And that since I haven't been to seminary or to a Bible-type teaching college, that I can't invoke the Holy... Folks, humans don't invoke the Holy Spirit. The Spirit jumps and attacks and destroys its human blessed victim. But it's not really a victim, is it? No. So they're blessed. What's the word I'm looking for? They're attacked by the Holy Spirit, but in a good way, I guess is the best way to say that. What's a word for that? When you're attacked, but in a good way. Um. Synonyms for being attacked, but in a good way. The Holy Spirit just jumps on us and bombards us and starts beating the world out of us. That's Hebrews 12, 6 through 8. And that's how it works. Sorry, I lost track of what I was talking about. Got a message from somebody, so I was checking into it. Um. We were talking about the end times, but anyway, let's get on with our New Testament study. Then we'll start Daniel 3. That seeing that they may see and not perceive and hearing that they may hear and not understand, lest any of them should be converted and their sin should be forgiven of them. And he said unto them, know ye not this parable? So you don't understand this parable? How then will you know all the parables? The sower soweth the word. Now, remember, the word of God is Jesus. The word of God is this script called life, earth that we all live in. 
God's ordained the end from the beginning. Everything is set in stone. What you're going to eat for lunch next Thursday or last Tuesday was all preordained before the earth was even formed. If you do not understand that, you do not understand God's sovereignty. You've got the fake Jesus. You don't have the truth. If you don't have the truth, you don't have Jesus. If you've got a fake truth, you've got a fake Jesus. There's no salvation in it. If you believe in man's free will, if you believe you're making the decisions apart from what God has ordained about what you're going to eat or who you're going to marry or the day you're going to die or the day that you're born, then you've got God reduced to the actor God of the role he performed in the Old Testament or New Testament that he's nothing more than just another actor on the stage like we all are. When the fact is, the sovereign God, who's ordained the end from the beginning, and then even came in and played roles in the Old and New Testament, in cameo appearances in this movie called Earth Life, but roles that he ordained before the earth was made. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the script. Movie script, scriptures. You get it? We're all just actors and puppets on this stage of what the Lord has ordained before he even made the earth. I know that whatever has been in the mind of God, it has been forever. And that forever goes backwards and forwards. These fake seminary trained preachers wouldn't know the truth in God's word if it bit them in the nostril. They celebrate pagan Christmas. They believe in man's free will decision. They celebrate pagan Easter. They celebrate pagan birthdays. Their only difference from a pagan Roman world religion is that they don't own quite the gold in the land, but that they don't pray to a female figure. That's the only difference. Or that the fake water baptism might be total submersion instead of being sprinkled at a baby. It's made with an adult. And they'll go, oh, it's just an outward appearance of whatever. It's a ritual and it's totally not needed. That's why they dunk clowns at the fair. You're a clown when you're being dunked and you think something's happening to you spiritually. It's not. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they heard it, Satan cometh and immediately taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. How does Satan have that authority and dominion over the goat community because that's what God's ordained. God doesn't deal with the evil. He just has created it through and has it run through the satanic demonic realm. That's how it works. Satan's the spiritual puppet on a stage. He does the evil dirty work. That's all this is. That's all the world you're living in. Everything around you is F-A-K-E and S-T-A-G-E-D. And these are they likewise, which are sown onto stony ground, who when they heard the word immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves. And so endure it for a time. You know, they're going to church and, you know, they're celebrating Christmas. But afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Oh, you should see the offense when I tell people God doesn't love everybody, that you have no free will, that God's ordained the end from the beginning. Remember, hell is not eternal torment. Hell just means the grave. People are, the goats are raised, judged, and they receive a very quick, swift second death after they weep and gnash their teeth at judgment. That's all it is. And these are they which are sown among the thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in and choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground. These are the sheep. Everything before were goats. 
such as hear the word and receive it. How come they receive it? Because they're smarter or because they have a bigger, better heart? No. They were born lost sheep and they get the call. The fix is in from the inception of the sheep's birth. Take no pride, lest any man boast of the grace, which means favor, that they've been chosen before the earth was formed. It's Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2, grace says they were preordained to it. They never give you verse 10. They just rattle off verse 8 and 9. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, they never give you Ephesians 2, 10, which tells you clearly ordained beforehand to this salvation. And these are they which are sown on the good ground, which as hear the word and receive it, bring forth fruit. They bear fruit from John 15, like it says you have to do. Faith without works is dead. James 2, 14 through 26. Faith is tangible evidence of your salvation. It's evidence of the Holy Spirit, Hebrews 11, 1, fused with John 3, 8. Faith comes by hearing, Romans 10, 17. Excuse me, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17, the word of God is Jesus, John 1, 1. And Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, John 10, 27. That's how it works. Fuse that then with Ephesians 1, 4, and 5, Romans 8, 29, and 30. And again, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. And you've got salvation. That's everything. Hebrews 12, 6 through 8, um, John 6, 39, 44, and 65. John 10, uh, 26 through 29. That's all you need to know about salvation. Then you got it. That's all right there. It's a piece of cake. Unlearned at a seminary, learned by the Holy Spirit. So they bring it forth fruit, some 30-fold, some 60, and some an hundred. King's English, and hundred instead of a hundred. Fifteen hundreds. Let's go to Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold. We just got through hearing he was that head of gold. And Daniel's dream, didn't we, in Daniel 2? Did you watch Daniel 2? Are you watching this on, a, on the playlist? Instead of clicking videos on this channel, you're clicking playlists and you're starting the Daniel playlist from the beginning. Is that what you're doing? Fantastic. Whose height was three score cubits and the breed of thereof six cubits. And he set it up upon the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Think about this as sort of the image that speaks at the end times, kind of like a parallel to it. Then Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar is a lost sheep at this time. He is the king of Babylon. He does it, get the call in the next chapter at Daniel 4. He pins it himself. You don't get to write anything in the word of God if you're a goat. Nebuchadnezzar wrote Daniel 4, was his words. Whether spiritually through Daniel or whatever, the Holy Spirit wrote it. It's Dan it's Nebuchadnezzar telling you his story. A to Z through salvation, the process that the Lord put him through. It's his quick little journey, as Mr. Babylon likes to use that word a lot, journey. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, set to gather together the princes, the governors, the captains, and the judges, and the treasurers, and counselors, and sheriffs, and the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image, which Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Then the princes, and the governors, and the captains, and the judges, and the treasurers, and counselors, and sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together for the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. They stood before the image. That Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then and Herald cried aloud to you, it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, because they ran the earth, that at the time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, salty, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king have set up. And whoso falleth not down and worship, shall that same hour be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at the time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, harp, sack, but salty, and all kinds of music, all the people and nations and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar 
the king had set up. We'll continue tomorrow. I'm glad you're here. I love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.